So last week we learned about Coulomb's law. And that was dealing with the force due to an electric charge. And more specifically, uh, this is for a point source. And so later in the class, we'll learn about uh, what the force might look like if you're acting on something that isn't a point source or due to some charge distribution that isn't a point source. But for a point source, Q1 and Q2, the force between those two particles of one acting on the other looked like this. And then we saw if the two charges were both positive or both negative, then that force was repulsive. And if the two charges had opposite signs, so one positive, one negative, then that force was attractive. So this is what we talked about last week. And now this week we will uh, talk about something slightly different, but related to this. So this week we're going to learn about electric fields. And so for an electric field, uh, this, it's going to be slightly different from a force. Uh, so in one way, electric fields are only due to a single charge. Whereas with an electric force, you need two charges uh, to satisfy that equation. So what an electric field is, is you are looking around the area of your point charge or around your charge distribution. And you're imagining if I were to put a second charge in that region, what force would that charge feel? Uh, so, We'll go through some examples and hopefully that will become a little more clear. So for a point source, the equation for the electric field, and we'll write the electric field as a capital E for its variable and it is a vector, K, Q, and maybe I'll call this, so I'll call it, yeah, I guess for now I'll call it capital Q, and it's still just a charge. And so this K is the same K from Coulomb's law, 8.99 times 10 to the minus nine, or 10 to the nine, Newton's meters squared over Coulomb squared. Capital Q is just a charge and R squared is still just a distance. And remember this R hat is just a unit vector. So uh, if we compare that to the equation for Coulomb's law, uh, 
and I'll just do it without the vectors for now. Then this should look very similar. And we can relate electric field and electric force by this equation. So your force is your electric field times whatever test charge you want to you want to investigate. Or your electric field is whatever force the object is feeling divided by uh, the charge that is exerting that force. So now the reason that we're interested in electric fields is that we, if as soon as we know what the electric field is for one object, then we can just multiply it by any type of charge that's in its vicinity and we'll know the force. So once you know the electric field, it's easier to uh, investigate multiple charges and instead of having to do the Coulomb equation again. And then uh, one more thing for the electric field, uh, we have to talk about its units. And the unit for electric field is, this has units of Newton. We want to know the units of the electric field. This has units of Coulombs. So this would be Newton divided by Coulomb for the units of electric field. So now let's move on to the graphical representation of electric field, or maybe just visual representation. Visual representation of electric fields. So we'll do positive in red and negative in blue. So for a point charge, your electric field lines will point radially outward for a positive charge. So this is what that looks like. And then for a negative charge, they'll point radially inward. So these lines are electric field lines. So now what the, this graph or this visual representation is telling you is the direction of the force that a positive uh, 
test charge. would feel if placed uh, in this region. So once you figured out your electric field, if I add another charge to this region, say, I put a charge here. Now I know that the force that this test charge will feel is going to be pointed in this direction. And once I have, once I've calculated the electric field, I can just take that electric field, multiply it by the the amount of charge that the test charge has, and I'll know the force that that test charge will feel. And then similarly for a negative charge, if we put, uh, so this test charge is positive. We put a positive test charge here. then it's gonna feel a force pointed towards the negative charge. So if you can figure out your electric field in your region first, then figuring out what direction other charges that you put in that region will feel becomes easier. So, so far the takeaway is that for positive charges, positive point charges, your electric field lines point radially away. And for negative point charges, your electric field lines point radially inward. Now, the next uh, conceptual point is that the density of electric field lines is a visual representation of the strength of the field. So for example, if I draw an electric field or an electric charge over here and its field lines Maybe you look like that. Now, because there are fewer field lines in this area, you would say that this new charge or this, this new electric field that I've drawn is weaker than the previous electric field that I had drawn. So not only will the direction of the field lines give you information, but the density of the field lines will also give you information. So if you were to put a, a test charge over here, and it was negative, then it would feel a force in the opposite direction of the electric field lines. 
So because this is a negative test charge, it would feel a force pointing this way. So it's the same. Uh, it's consistent with what we've learned with for Coulomb's law. Uh, basically, the like charges will repel and opposite charges will attract. So maybe as a bit of a, a historical aside, you might be wondering uh, why we care about what direction positive charges move when electrons are the things that we know determine whether something is positively or negatively charged. And uh, that's because physicists hundreds of years ago didn't know that electrons were the things that moved uh, from object to object. So basically, uh, we, or our theoretical framework was developed for positive charges uh, because It was not known at the time that negative charges, also known as electrons, uh, were responsible for Um, uh, let's say charged objects. And as we'll learn about uh, maybe next week, uh, moving charges, or in other words, a current, electric current. And so even though it might make more sense to redo our theoretical framework, because now we know that electric charges are actually the ones that do the moving, uh, we keep uh, everything as it was uh, when it was thought that positive charges were the ones doing the moving. Uh, so just, if you were curious as to why we care about what a positive test charge is gonna do when that's typically not what charge is gonna be moving, this is why. Okay. Uh, so that was just kind of an aside. Uh, so let's get back to electric fields. And now this will be electric fields for multiple sources. And so the first one that I wanna introduce is very important. Uh, this is called an electric dipole. And it consists of a positive charge and a negative charge. Maybe I'll do. Do them in different colors. Okay. 
And so we'll assume we'll assume that the the magnitude of the charge is the same. And so we saw for positive charges, your field lines point radially outward. And for negative field lines, they point radially inward. And so if you start kind of drawing these lines further out, you would see that they start to connect with one another. And so I'll, I'll draw a more complete picture on the next slide. Uh, but so the electric fields between two charges will also interact. But again, once you can find the electric field for this region, then it doesn't matter what test charge I put in it, we can figure out what the uh, force that electric charge would feel. And so a bit later on in the class, we will uh, solve for what the equation for an electric dipole looks like. Uh, but for right now, the concept that I wanted to share is just that the these electric field lines can interact with each other and they will make a picture that I'll show on this next slide. So this is for the electric dipole. Your positive charge and your negative charge. And your field lines would look something like this. And so these, these field lines that I'm not fully drawing, they might connect further down off the, off the screen. And so now you can look at different regions of this, now that we know what the electric field lines look like. Uh, so the black lines are the electric field lines. If we were to put, and maybe I'll divide this into three different regions, region one, region two, and region three. So if I put a positive test charge in region one, uh, I'll let you guys think about it for uh, a minute and what direction you think the force that this blue test charge will feel in region one. Okay, now let's put the test charge in region two. And now which, which direction will the test charge, the force on the test charge, uh, what direction will it point in region two? And again, left, right, up or down. So right is the correct answer. Oops. Okay. 
And so if you think about it, if there was no, so let's cover up the negative uh, charge. If there was just a positive charge here, then the test charge is also positive. So they would repel each other. So the test charge would get pushed to the right. Then if the, if we cover up the positive charge, we look at just the negative charge, the, pos the test charge is positive and the negative charge is negative. So they're opposite signs. So they would attract. So it would get pulled to the right. So both of those forces are going towards the right. So if you add two forces that are both in the pointing to the right, then the test charge would move to the right. Okay, so then let's do the last region. So we'll put a test charge here. And which way you think the, the force acting on the chest, test charge will point. Again, either left, right, or left, right, up, or down. It's like everyone is saying left, and that is the correct intuition. So this is the power of knowing your, if you can figure out your electric fields, then it's really easy to figure out what direction a the force would be if you uh, put a test charge in your system. So if you put your test charge in region one, it'll point to the left. You put your test charge in the middle, uh, it would point to the right. And then if you put your test charge in region three, it'll point to the left. Uh, so somebody was asking, uh, how would I get something that points up or down? So for example, if you put a test charge here, then maybe I'll do it in green. So if I put a test charge here, then the initial force that it might feel would be kind of up this direction, but now it's moved. So uh, if you were to plot the motion of this test charge over time, it would look something like this, where you would follow the green dots. So uh, another way to think about the electric field lines are if I were to release a positive charge in this region, I could trace one of these electric field lines and that would be the path that that positive charge would take. So like I was saying in this first instance, the force is kind of pointing up and then over here, you would get a force pointing down. Uh, so if you, you can follow the path of the field lines and that is the path that a positive charge would take uh, if you released it in this region of space. So this is an electric dipole. But now what happens if we, instead of putting a positive and a negative charge together, what if we put two positive charges together? So this doesn't have a special name because this is not a, a usual configuration, but let's take a look at these field lines. So again, you would get your positive charges or your electric field lines for a positive charge pointing radially outward. And now you would have that for both of these. And so if you continued these field lines outward, Eventually you would get to a point in the middle here 
where these field lines don't want to interact with each other. And so you would actually get a region of space in the middle here, or maybe maybe I'll ask I'll ask you guys to think about that. So if we draw our three regions again, one, two, and three. So we'll start in region one. If I put a test charge here, will the force be left, right, up, or down? Okay, most people are saying left, so that is correct. And then if I put a test charge over here in region three, oh, oops, I didn't mean to draw that arrow, but it's gonna point to the right. <laughs> uh, but that's not the big reveal. So the big reveal is what direction will the force be if I put the test charge in the middle here? And I'll let you guys think about that for maybe a minute or so. It won't move. Uh, but so if it won't move, what would you say about the force? What would you say the force is equal to? Right, so the magnitude of the force that this test charge feels in the middle is zero, and that's why it's not going to move. And the region is actually fairly big. You might think uh, if I'm closer to, or let me think about this. Yeah, so I think you have to be exactly in the middle for there to be no force. But if you offset it a little bit, so maybe I'll write. So in the middle, again, assuming that these two have the same amount of charge, then in the middle, the force would be zero. But if I put it a little bit closer to uh, this charge on the right-hand side, and if we think about our Coulomb's law equation, because this uh, blue dot is closer to the charge on the right, then the force pointing in this direction will be bigger than the force pointing in that direction. So there would be a net force that points to the left. And that would cause this charge to move. To the left. But then it would reach a point. Where it's closer to the left hand charge and so it would feel a force to the right that's bigger than the force to the left and so you would get a a motion where this point charge just keeps going back and forth in this region and it never like it, it would never escape And so this is a, an example of a harmonic oscillator. So that's something that you saw in physics one, where we talked about 
pendulums and mass spring systems. So this is another type of system where you can get a, an object that just moves back and forth. And it would do that indefinitely unless there is some other force acting on this system. So any questions about that? Then the last conceptual thing that I will introduce is, and we'll talk more about this as we go through the class. So insulators and conductors. And so just for a rudimentary definition that we can use for now. Insulators, uh, it's hard to move the electrons that are in that material. And in conductors, the electrons are easy to move. So some examples for conductors, you have things like metals, and then for insulators, you have things like rubber, wood, noble gases, And we'll talk more about conductors and insulators when we start talking about circuits. Uh, but for right now, uh, what we want to look at is the behavior of conductors in electric fields. So if we take a conductor, let's say it's spherical or circular, this 2D representation, and let's say that, or maybe I'll do it in a couple different pictures. So no conductor, we'll say that we have an electric field pointing to the right. And we'll say that it's a uniform electric field. So it's always pointing to the right with the same intensity. And then when we put a conducting material inside of this electric field, it's going to distort the electric field in this kind of a way. And the reason that the electric field is being distorted is that the Maybe I should have drawn three pictures. Oops. 
So when the conductor is not in the electric field, you'll have some distribution of charges that's equal. But now when you put that conductor in the electric field, the So if we think about positive charges, the positive charges are like, let's say we put a, a test charge here and we look at the direction of the electric field lines, it's gonna have a force that's pointing to the right. So what's gonna happen is all of your positive charges are gonna build up on the right-hand side of the sphere and then if we take a negative test charge and we look at the direction of the electric field lines, we would see that the negative charge wants to move to the left of the sphere. And so you would have a buildup of negative charge over here. Now, because the charge distribution is not equal anymore, that's what's going to cause the, the deformation of these field lines. So the electric field, so when we put the conductor in the electric field, the charge inside of the conductor responds to that electric field. But then the new distribution of charges then interacts with the electric field and distorts it a bit. And so this process of a conductor having its charges moved about is called polarization. And we'll talk more about that later on in the class.